This is the 2022 AMC 10A, problem number 25. Let R, S, and T be squares that are vertices at lattice points, i.e. points whose coordinates are both integers in the coordinate plane, together with their interiors. The bottom edge of each square is on the x-axis. The left edge of R and the right edge of S are on the y-axis, and R contains nine-fourths as many lattice points as does S. The top two vertices of T are in R and R union S, and T contains one fourth of the lattice points contained in R union S. See the figure, not drawn to scale. The fraction of lattice points in S that are in S and T is 27 times the fraction of lattice points in R that are in R and T. What is the minimum possible value of the edge length of R plus the edge length of S plus the edge length of T? Okay, so we have these three squares here, right? So let's just, I mean, the problem's asking about the edge length of R, the edge length of S and the edge length of T. So let's set some variables, right? Let the edge length of R be R and the edge length of S will be S and the edge length of T will let be T, right? And now as for, um down here, right? The position of T along the x-axis also matters in the problem. So we're going to set it to, let's say, X and T minus X. All right. So let's try to make sense of what this problem is saying. R contains a nine-fourth as many lattice points as does S. Well, what that means is that the number of points in R is nine-fourths times the number of points in S. And we know the number of points in R, right? What that would have to be is that would have to be R plus one times R plus one, right? Because if the side length is R, that means that there's actually R plus one points along the side. So basically there are R plus one points uh, along that side. And then we square it because it's, an, it's a square of R plus one by R plus one, right? And then we put that over S plus one squared. And this equals nine fourths. All right, now let's do a little bit of computations. We can take the square root of both sides and we get R plus one over S plus one is equal to three halves. And if we cross multiply and simplify things, we just get two R is equal to three S plus one. So let's just go on to what the problem says next, which is, the top two vertices of T are in R and R union S, and T contains one fourth of the lattice points contained in R union S. Okay, well, how many points are there in T? Well, that's simple. That's just T plus one squared. And how many points are in R union S? Well, that's just R plus one squared plus S plus one squared, but where we are overlapping these points in both of these squares. And there's S plus one points here. So we have to subtract S plus one. But a better way to write S plus one squared minus S plus one is just S times S plus one. That is one fourth. All right. And then the final thing that the problem says is the fraction of lattice points in S that are in S and T is 27 times the fraction of lattice points in R that are in R and T. All right. So what exactly does this mean? Well, this means, well, first, what is the fraction of lattice points in S that are in S and T? Well, that's just the number of points in S and T over the number of points that are in S. But we know that because this is a T by X rectangle, the number of points in this is T plus one times X plus one, which means that the ratio is just T plus one times X plus one over S squared. And similarly, the ratio of points in R and T to the number of points in R is just T plus one times T minus X plus one 
over r squared, right? And this ratio here is just 27. Well, actually, this is a ginormous fraction and it can be really intimidating to look at, but notice that a lot of things cancel. First off, these t plus ones cancel. And also notice, like if we move this r squared uh, to the top here, and then we move this to the bottom, like by simplifying the fraction, we just get this. But we know, uh, we don't, we get, it's plus one still, r plus one squared and s plus one squared, right? But we know that this r plus one squared over s plus one squared is equal to nine fourths. So this is just nine fourths over here. But we can just move that to the other side where 27 is, and it simplifies everything to this little ratio equaling 12 x plus 1 over t minus x plus 1 equals 12. And we can further simplify things by moving this t minus x plus 1 to this side. And if we completely simplify it, right, this 1 moves over to this side and makes this 11. And this moves over to this side and makes 13x. All right. And now what we want is we want to figure out what, what t has to be, like what modular and what integer it'll have to be in order to make x also an integer. Well, if we just do 13x minus 11 over 12, that's what t is equal to. All right, and now all we need to do is we need to figure out when does x, when does what values of x makes this fraction an integer? Well, that's when 13, 13x minus 11 is zero in mod 12. And this just becomes one. And this uh, moves to this side and we get that x is equivalent to 11 in mod 12. So let's make x equal to 12k plus 11. Then plugging back into this expression, what we'll end up getting is just, well, we get 156k plus 143 minus 11 over 12. This simplifies to be 132. Put it over 12 is 11. And then this is 13k, which means that t is equal to 13k plus 11. So this is our pair that we need for k's. All right. So what have we gotten from this? We've gotten uh, r plus one squared over s plus one squared is nine fourths. Two r is equal to three s plus one. Uh, T plus one squared over r plus one squared plus s times s plus one is one fourth. And we have derived that in order for t and x to be integers, t has to be 13k plus 11. All right, so now, We can potentially we can get rid of all of this, and now we can use these equations to try and solve for the minimum values that we need. All right. So this is the equation that we haven't really looked into yet, and that's because it's pretty much the most complicated equation. So let's let's look at it. Let's cross multiply. All right. So the main issue here is that we have the sum of a lot of like square terms, right? So it is very hard to determine what values of R and S make the correct value of T. But the one thing we still have up our sleeve is this equation. And the reason why this equation is so important is because this is an even number. This is one, which means that this has to be odd. So S has to be an odd number. So let's let S equal 2A minus 1. Well, if we plug it back into this equation, we get 2R is equal to 6A minus 3 plus 1. So 6A minus 2, which makes R equal to 3A minus 1. 
And we can plug this back into this equation. And if we simplify it even further, four a squared plus nine a squared is 13 a squared. And now we can actually go one step further, which is the fact that because this is a multiple of four, we know that a has to be even because this has to be even. So we set a to be even. And now everything simplifies off quite nicely because we get multiples of four everywhere. And when we divide, we get this. All right. And now we are very close because 13 b squared minus b all we need now is to figure out what values of b are able to make t plus 1 uh, squared a perfect square. However, it is um, trying to go through all the values of b is not a good idea because actually the value of b where uh, that 13b squared minus b is first a perfect square is a pretty high number. And also, we need to keep in mind that t has to equal 13k plus 11, right? Like if we just find an arbitrary value that makes this a perfect square, it might not work because T specifically has to be 13K plus 11. Uh, but that's actually exactly the key here because if we factor this as B times 13B minus one, well, we need T to be 13K plus 11, which means T plus one is 13K plus 12, which is negative one in mod 13. When So when we square it, right? This is one in mod 13. If we take everything in, in it, it, one in mod 13, we get that one is equivalent to B times, and then this part is negative one in mod 13, which means B has to equal negative one in mod 13, which means that we can just plug in B as, for example, 13C minus one. And if we plug that in, we get 13c minus 1 times, and then 169c minus 14. And that is what we finally needed. Because now we've really like maxed out here in terms of what we can do. Um, and now all we can really do is plug in. And the reason why I'm plugging in here is a smart thing to do is because at this point, uh, if you if you think about it, even C just equaling one makes B equal 12. And then uh, A would equal 24. And then S would equal 47. And like R would already be um, like what? It would already be like 35, right? Uh, and the sum increases into the hundreds already, right? And if you look at the answer choices, 336 through 340, C cannot be more than like maybe like five or before it exceeds those answer choices, most likely. So we can we, we should just plug, plug in and see. So if we try C equals one, that doesn't work because we get 12 times 155. So that doesn't work because that's not a perfect square. However, the very next number C equals two is what gives us our solution because we get 25 times, and then if you go into here, we get 338 minus 14, that is 324, which is 18 squared. So this whole thing is 90 squared, which means T plus one is equal to 90. And that gives us T is equal to 89. It also, because A equals, uh, no, because C equals two, that's a C. Uh, because C equals two, that makes B 25, that makes A 50. And that makes S 99, and that makes R 149. And now the problem was asking for the sum of the side lengths of the three squares. And if we add these up, we get 337. Answer choice B.